Hi, I'm, I'm Justin Arin, and um, I'm, I work at the University of Cape Town, but part of my research brings me to the Takai Forest area, where I'm involved as a scientific consultant for Table Mountain National Park. The Great Primate Handshake, we shook hands with it immediately because we see the huge need for positive publicity for the plight of the baboons. It's only really through public pressure that ultimately these baboons are going to have their, their say in, in the future on the peninsula. This is one of the few areas where there is still habitat that's available to them. They're not in an urban area and it's low-lying. All the other areas, pretty much the low-lying land has been usurped for houses. Provided that there's no silly decisions to turn that into housing or something, then there's still a chance that this troop can actually come down in winter and access the nutrient-rich low-lying plains, which means that conservation-wise, probably a very high priority. We collar the baboons because we're trying to understand um, what, if, what influences troop movement patterns. The only way we can get troop movement patterns simultaneously, so this troop relative to that troop in exactly the same weather, that's the key thing. We've got to be able to control for movements not this year and then compared to next year, because every year is different, rainfall and all sorts of things, to see how they move relative to one another. Monitored troops, unmonitored troops. The only way we can achieve that is by using the collars. So they give us fantastic information as to how troops use the habitat that's available to them. We bring international volunteers in and we train them in animal behaviour, particularly baboon behaviour. Then they follow the troops and record behaviour for a period of 10 consecutive days, which is a unique opportunity to interact with a wild, free-living primate that's habituated to close human observation. And that's a privilege. To get inside the world of a baboon um, for 10 days is a great experience. I think there'll always be baboons in this area. I think, I think that's the good news. I, d I don't know how it's going to go on because they're growing. I mean, this 115 baboons within this small area is unparalleled. And I predict these troops are going to bombshell out into urban areas and this is going to become a real hotspot for urban baboon conflict. And I suspect that numbers will be pruned in the process um, and that a smaller troop of well-managed baboons is the long-term future. There have been talks about removing animals from the peninsula and taking them off, moving them to areas that they you know, traditionally live outside of the peninsula. And the problem with that is, is what happens if it's got TB? What happens if it's carrying a, a human pathogen as a consequence of this close proximity of living with humans? It's not their fault. It's like, I think the best analogy for me is, it's like a sea of humanity lapping up against the mountain. And that's their last refuge. They're like an island, but the, the tide is rising the whole time.